You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everyone, welcome to Don't F with the Original. With Nicholas, I am the gaming correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic and movie critic. Now, in celebration of the upcoming Star Trek Into Darkness, which is like, like you have to say it in one breath because there's no colon. Star Trek Into Darkness. <laughs> yeah, they were trekking into darkness. I realized I said darkness and colon in the same sentence. Anyway. Nice. <laughs> we are going to talk about the original Star Trek, the motion picture. Yeah. Although, I find the word motion kind of relative in this context, yeah. but... That's why we're probably going to, you know, expand a little bit and talk about mostly Star Trek, the original series, and not just the original motion pictures, because we don't want to make everybody sleepy <laughs> during the podcast. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I was going to say, we already talked at length about Star Trek, the motion picture, during our Worst of the 80s podcast. You can listen to it. It's part of the Dreamer's Edge podcast at idiomatic.com. Plug! Uh, so we're going to expand the conversation, like you said, and talk about the Star Trek in general, because, you know, it's, it's like the major geek franchise. One of the first that created that devoted fan following, which would later lead to making remakes because you're insured an audience, whether or not they like it, they're going to see it type deal. Exactly. So totally in vain with our show is what I'm saying. Yep. All right. Star Trek, uh, what was it called? The Star, first? Star Trek, Star Trek. <laughs> it's just Star Trek? It's just Star Trek. I thought it was something like... No. Oh, okay. It's just Star Trek. It's basically the voyages of the Starship Enterprise and its crew. and they basically... Led by Captain Pike. Captain Pike? Well, the first, the, for the pilot was... We're really? doing it in order, aren't we? I guess. I didn't I, I totally forgot that. Captain Pike. Wow. Captain Pike. He's Kirk's elder... Uh, this was before Kirk. He lands on the planet and decides to stay there at the end of the episode. That's why the second episode suddenly is Kirk. Yeah. Good good call. And, yeah, it's basically just a crew of people exploring the galaxy, promoting this, you know, unity thing, you know, that, you know, we can all be together and, you know, even if we're different. Actually, that was the first two seasons. The third season was just the Alien of the Day episode. But the first two seasons... With time were... travel! Yes. And the evil universe... Uh, where people have goatees. Uh, that's where that comes from, by the way. Every time there's a you know evil universe and people have goatees, it's because Spock had a goatee in evil universe. Yeah, it's uh, what is it called? Mirror, mirror. That episode. I, think? I forget. I don't remember. I, I never remember the title of the episodes. Uh, besides Spock's brains, which was Spock's brain, which is a classic, but. Uh... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was just basically this big message of, you know, yeah, we can all work together and make this cool stuff in the future. In future, you know, things will be great. No more racism, no more bad stuff. Just, you know, cool exploring of space. Yeah, that was totally Gene Roddenberry's idea, is that in the future, we will have outgrown most of the bitter things that is the source of human strife. Yeah. No more racism, no more sexism, equal opportunity everywhere. Yeah. Which in the 60s mostly meant a bunch of token characters that don't really play much of a role. But... Oh, they all, they all had pretty much, you know, their, their arcs once in a while. Once in a while, <laughs> but there are three main characters to the Star Trek series. That is true. It's Bone, Spock, and Kirk. Yeah. They're all white. Spock's a Vulcan. I mean, come on, he's from another planet. He's not white. <laughs> right. And in, 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 in Star Trek IV, he does mention that he feels he resembles more the Chinese. But I guess. Yes. Or Kirk says that, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. But you're right, there are both like three, you know, white males, which is probably guess, the norm in the 60s, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but it's a product of its time. Like I, yeah. I'm not trying to say, oh, Gene Roddenberry was a hypocrite. No, he was he was making televisions in the '60s. He wasn't going to get away with a main character that's black. That's that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it, it is what it is, and I think if for, for for the time, it, it's it's great for, for what it, it tries to show as the message. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I th and I think the reason why people grasped onto it so powerfully, which. To be fair, they didn't grasp onto it when it originally aired. Like, it was a flop originally and only picked up once in syndication when well, people started it, watching it. It had its fans. I mean, when it got canceled their second season, there was a write-in and people said, no, you need to make it more of that, more of this. And there was enough. Yeah, but know. there's a reason why it was canceled in second season yeah. because it wasn't hitting the ratings. Good point. It, it had its niche audience, basically. Yeah. 
But then it became huge in syndication. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons for that is because Star Trek is the sort of thing that's easier to get into when it airs once per day. Because it doesn't really have the sort of gripping storyline or gripping suspense that will get you to go like, Oh, I can't wait to see what happens next week. But it has enough of a intellectual engagement and curiosity to it that you're like, I kind of want to see more of that. You yeah, know? exactly. That that again, that's that's what got me to Next Generation as well. I didn't see the first, you know, Diffusion, but when it was on ABC like every weeknights, you know, it's like, yeah, this is this is uh, tomorrow. I'll watch it again. You know, this is fun. You know, it really gets you into it. So you're, you're probably right in, in that case. Hmm. Uh, but its huge success for me, I think, with Star Trek is its optimism. I, I really do think. You know, there's a reason why NASA actually named the shuttle uh, the Enterprise. And it's because it's really beloved. And I think it's that optimism. It's that idea that man can achieve anything. It can, it can overcome its own pettiness. It can go into space. It can solve other people's problems <laughs> week after week. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's sort of like man can be awesome. And we just have to strive to be awesome and go... To places no man's gone before, you know, it's like that whole yeah. idea of challenging yourself and succeeding. Yeah, it's, working together as yeah, well. Yeah, you know, exactly. And I think that's what stuck with people. It's it's such an optimistic message. It's the, it's such a American message when you think about it. It's sort of like work hard, do things, and you will achieve greatness. I mean, like that's the basis of the American dream. Yeah. But stripped of its consumerism. Yeah, and that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what's beautiful about it. Yeah. Yeah, you put it very eloquently. Um, So that show eventually ended, but it had its firmly established syndication fanhood at that point. Oh, yeah. Which led in the 80s to the first movie, the one we were supposed to talk about, but we're probably going to go really fast <laughs> across uh, Star Trek. Um, the motion picture. The motion picture. Yeah. Very ironic title. <laughs> yes. Well, we, we were talking about it uh, just before recording. You said a, a, a lot of it feels like they're trying to imitate 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. It's really those long shots of the ship and, you know, in the, the, the quote-unquote silence of space. Although it's kind of almost like a more hum when, they, when the, the ship passes by. And all those sweeping shots of space. They're really trying to make something artsy with it. And, you know, it, it, if you're looking for that... it. it kind of succeeds but i don't think the start that the average star trek fan was looking for 2001 a space odyssey when they went to see a star trek movie no i, I don't even know that it succeeds really because the enterprise looks boring like it's the spaceships in in 2001 a space odyssey are fantastic looking because they look real like yeah. they look like a real spaceship might look if it were built you know a few years after the movie came out that's true the Enterprise looks like the Enterprise. It should look like the Enterprise. That's what the uh, the mythology established. But it doesn't look fascinating. It you know it, it's yeah. a big disc with like with rabbit the, ears. Yeah, yeah it's a disc and, and, and a then penis. the body, a body, and then the rabbit ears at the end of the penis, I guess, or something. <laughs> yeah, it it is. It, it's you know. It's functional. It's what it is. Yeah. No. No. I, I mean, it looks cool, but it yeah. doesn't look real. You know. Yeah, that's true. But my biggest problem with that movie is I feel that they missed the point of what makes Star Trek great. It's There's a certain humanity that's being celebrated in the TV show. And the movie does not do that. It goes into this way funky science fiction concept where the past comes back to you in a different form. Yeah. And, and it's, and, but the humans don't really play a part in that story. Yeah, it's slight spoilers, but it's about like you know merging with technology. At one point, when the character becomes kind of a robot-ish mm. thing, uh, still not quite sure what she turns into. <laughs> and then, you know, it's basically a robot wanted to meet its its creator. It's interesting, an interesting message, but really not what the series was about at all. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. And I think that is its principal failure. I mean, there has been many a blog about how boring this thing is. Yeah. And they're all right. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but I think its major problem is that it's not Star Trek. You're right. Also, just as a side note, I just thought, like, you know, Kirk was kind of an asshole in this movie. 
in fairness <laughs> though, Kirk in the movies is not quite Kirk in the TV show. Because Kirk in the TV show is this guy who always has the answer, who's kind of a loving person. He's he's a team player and all of that. Yeah. In the movies, he's always kind of a jerk who's sort of like, I'll do whatever I want to do because I'm Kirk. Exactly. And this one is like, okay, I am going to take command of the ship. You would, it was promised to you, but no, I'm taking command of the Enterprise because I want to. <laughs> it's like... You know, you're kind. We kind of like you from the series, but if he, you know, people who just jump in and watch the movie cold, they're just going to look at those guys like, "What a jerk!" <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I like when they they just basically hope you saw the background, you know, and say, "Okay, you, you're supposed to like these characters," and mm. then they act like weirdly, and it's like, "Yeah, I'm supposed to like them, but you know, they're, he's acting kind of, you know, like an ass." Let's face it. Yeah, no. It's, uh, the thing with when you make the jump to the movie and you're you're basing it on TV characters, it can be difficult, quite a challenge to get the characters right because you have to condense them into an hour and a half when really they've been established for years and years and seasons of television where their personality was sort of developed a little bit at a time. Yeah. And so, because TV show allows you to explore one facet of a character, one episode, and another facet of that same character, and another episode, and the actor gets to make it consistent, and you're all good to go. Yeah. The movie has to condense all of that, so that can be hard. Yeah. It takes a really talented writer to basically introduce all your characters and their their traits like really fast, and like and not take half the movie. Yeah, we'll we'll get to some of the issues that raises when we get to the next generation movies. Yes. <laughs> But just, you know, as an aside, one good example of that done well is um, Serenity. Yeah. You know, the, the scene where the ship is about to crash and, you know, Mal goes from character to character and is like, hey, what is your character trait? Who are you? <laughs> and basically they react to him. And that's well done. And it's very short and you can see what it is. And in Star Trek, you're basically, you're supposed to know these characters. Who cares? Seriously. You know, if you don't, go watch the series. Why are you watching this movie if you haven't seen the series? <laughs> But they don't even follow the through line, as you pointed out, of these characters. And I feel a little bit that the writers were simply not interested in revisiting the characters. They were in interested in the concept of their monster of the week, That's essentially. true. That is true. Okay, well, uh, speaking of uh, retcons and going back, uh, might as well talk about the reboot. Yeah. We're working our way to it, finally. Star Trek, the original remake. Yeah. <laughs> Which is technically not quite so because they found a loophole through time travel to make yeah. both continuities coexist. But that's fine. I'm fine. It's a new, it's a new universe. It's fine. You know, it's, it's a, clever. Actually, I think it's clever. It's clever. It was perfectly fine. It was explained in the next generation episode where every action that can happen happens in another universe. So fine. We're in another universe, different from the first one. Perfectly cool with it. Mm. I didn't think I was gonna like the reboot, but I really liked it. Uh, it was fun. It introduced all the characters very well. Uh, even some that came out of nowhere from like in the middle of an isolated planet. And hey, it's Scotty all of a sudden. Let's bring him on the ship. But uh, <laughs> uh, it was fun. And, you know, it had the link with like old Spock. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, it had a lot of serendipity. But for me, that's sort of what's clever about that movie. Because I guess what I like about the star the new Star Trek is that it goes back to the original theme of achievement of human achievement and 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 going where no man's gone before because the basic idea of star trek the original series we talked about is you know go where no man's gone before don't let anything stop you in your ambition and yeah. you'll achieve greatness and then next generation sort of geared it more into sort of almost like sort of a philosophical spin of like what does human achievement mean and imply and word and then the then the other spin-offs just sort of lost that yeah you know? you're right and the movies have none of it none none you know? and this one is the one that went back to it and and but how do you do that today like you know we're a much more cynical society than we were in the 60s yeah and so they went like well what's the one thing that's always standing in your way oh yourself and that's what the movie was all about. It was about two characters, Kirk and Spock. Bones got totally shoved to the side. There. I know. <laughs> and um, it was all about these guys who have this great destiny that we know of and that they themselves are almost aware of. Yeah. But are sort of just feeling torn about the weight of carrying such a destiny. On the one hand, you have Kirk who had a great father who was this amazing hero who yeah. died a hero uh, in a scene that had me 
teary eyed. It's really, really effective. Nice. I find. And um, and just going like, ah, oh, the weight of that. I feel angry and rebellious and. You know, and it's that's totally in, in keeping with Kirk as a character as well, where he's just like, uh, I don't obey any rules, and I won't even obey the weight of of my own pathos. And then you have uh, Spock, who I could really could relate to in the sense of like he's having the classic immigrant thing, where he's like, my mother's from this culture, I'm living in that culture, and my father's from that culture, yeah. and he's sort of like it, everybody's making fun of me for it. Or, 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 I have that pathos going on, and then both of them we know have a great destiny. Yeah. Because we've seen the series. Mm-hmm. And both of them are being like such dicks about it. Like so reluctant until like as if the plot itself just went like, no, no, no. You are going to become a hero no matter how hard you try not to be. I'm going to put you next to Scotty. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. You people are going to end up together being friends no matter what. And they're just like, why is the universe pulling us in this direction? Yeah. yeah. And I like that. I thought that was a interesting idea. That's interesting. Yeah, my, there are certain things I didn't like that, that were weird. Um, like, for example, um, one I didn't like was the engine room. I like the engine rooms being clean. You know, it's like it's the future. Mm. It's clean. You know, everything. You know, we're, we're getting we're getting this all pollution crap, and that engine room looked like such a mess. It looked like a giant fat beer factory, I guess, or you know, Scotty's not there to clean it up. I guess so, but you know the warp engines are gone. It's, it it looks like it works on uh, on, on oil, you know. Oh, I got a sense of uh, hydraulics. Yeah, but you know, hydro. You know, this isn't steampunk, man. <laughs> this is the future. Man. That's how it felt to me. Though. I know, I know, it, but I'm not saying you. It's not steampunk. It's, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't feel <laughs> steampunk. It should, you know. It was no, like, it works on the lithium crystals. Yeah. It's supposed to. Yeah, exactly. So you know, <laughs> it, how do I know this? Because <laughs> you're a geek like me. Um, I don't know why they had to change it. it. It's just, it seems ridiculous. Uh, the phasers bouncing was kind of weird too. <laughs> like yeah, the, 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 the gun sound on yeah. the phaser was like, is that a ricochet sound I'm hearing? That's yes. really weird. It's right on the mirror with a laser pointer. Well, that was not ricochet <laughs> with a ping. <laughs> Although I will say a lot of people have said, oh, they changed the phasers. No, if you watch the original series, the phasers look like guns. They did not change them. Yes, they changed it in the next generation so they would look less like guns. And more like a remote control. Yes. And also, I, there's this weird scene where it doesn't Uhura say that she got the position because she gave good head to Spock. <laughs> what? No, I didn't get that. <laughs> she's really worried that, you know, that she, she's not going to take her as the, the communications officer. It's like She's like, have I not, you know shown oral sensitivity and it's like really is like are you saying you, you want the job because you gave head to spock it's just i didn't really, catch that really it's, it's like, yes watch it it's really weird it's like it's it, it seems like kind of like a you know but, so everything is nice and beautiful in the future but you're women's <laughs> women's rights like fuck that you're gonna get a job if you blow me it's like, well he's a vulcan <laughs> So, you know, he doesn't obey those rules that Gene Roddenberry set out. Yeah, you know, watch it. It's it's just really it's like, it, did you just say you're getting the job because you gave him head? It's really weird. They're together, but and they, they, I guess she's playing with oral sensitivity as any, I don't know, but it's just, what? <laughs> well, I will say, though, the relationship between Spock and Aurora in this mm-hmm. new reality, I thought is a fantastic idea. I thought the scene where she, the... Uh, you know, he's really upset because he lost his entire species. Yeah. And uh, Kirk is somewhat less than sensitive about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the scene where the he's completely calm and the, the uh, elevator closes and she goes like, are you all right? And she's like, and she's being like super sweet to him and super yeah. supportive and they're sensual as well. Uh, the way lovers are. And, and he's just sort of like trembling and going like, well, I need your support that you're giving me right now, but I also need to act like a Vulcan right now because mm-hmm. I'm about to lose my shit. Yeah. Like, that was really well acted from Quinto, who does Spa, yeah. and from Aurora. Like, th- that's a really good scene and also a really touching one. A great way of showing how much Spock is about to lose it without showing him losing it yet. Yeah. And then Kirk makes him lose it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He just pushes to the extreme. And, like, a lot of people have criticized the plot thread where, like, Spock just loses and goes, like, you're going to end up in, like, Tatooine. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and and it's like, yeah, no, but, like, keep in mind what Kirk did. Like, really. Like, the man just lost his parents, his species, everything he's ever known and loved. Yeah. And you're like, feels good. It's like, a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're going to end up on Tatooine if you do stuff like that, all right? Yeah. <laughs> 
The ice plant is hot, by the way, not Tatooine. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I, I screwed up the joke. Uh, uh, I lose my geek <laughs> membership card, which uh, makes me feel good, actually. <laughs> I'll give you a pass with the dilithium crystal thing. But uh, it was fun, and I, I'm, I wonder what the second one's going to be like. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. There's uh, quite a few uh, things. I, I love that Pike is still there. Because, you know, the, the elder captain yeah. in, in the reboot is Pike, who, and he's still there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. They didn't kill him off in that continuity. <laughs> yeah, but he's was he, isn't Kirk captain now? Is he going to be, like, captain in training? What the hell <laughs> What the hell's happening here? Yeah. Or maybe, you know, uh, Pike will be admiral and he's a captain. I guess, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people who think uh, it's going to be a return with, of Khan. And I'm thinking that's probably not going to be. But you know there's one episode in the original series where you have this one character who gains like super psychic powers and becomes like beyond human and becomes arrogant for it and then Kirk ends up killing him. Yeah. I think it's going to be that guy. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, Khan wouldn't work. I mean, Khan, you have to set up that he's marooned first and then he wants to revenge. That's, in a two-hour movie, it's like, okay, marooned like two years later and he comes back. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, no, that, that's interesting. That that could be that could, that could work. Hmm. I wonder if Spa's gonna have to mate in this one. You know, because the Vulcans mate every seven years. It's gonna be a problem. <laughs> oh, I wonder if they're gonna remember that. Oh wait, 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 wait! There's no Vulcans left. He doesn't have to obey those crazy rules. He can no, it, it's again. not. It's not a rule. It's it's his his body that oh, okay. you know. That they're yeah, but he's half human. He still, he still needed two in the series. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There were a bunch of episodes. You know, that's where he fought Kirk for over over mate because the mate chose like Kirk instead of Spock, and Spock's like, "I'm gonna fight for him." And yeah, yeah, like, I remember that episode. It was really stupid. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Although that music, the music yes. from their fight is used everywhere. Yeah, they need to, they need to make a fun of that music in this movie. That's gonna be great. <laughs> Just a remix or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just like during the credits, when you reach the the end part of the credits where they start listing the songs, just yeah. play that song. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be funny. That, that would make the credits worth watching. Yeah. And I, I mean, the trailers look great. I mean, it's it's one of those J.J. Abrams productions. And what does that mean? That means that the trailers don't show you jack shit. Because he is really, really intense about controlling the marketing to avoid spoilers. Really? Yeah. He's, he's that powerful that he's like... Uh... This is the man who is helming not only the Star Trek franchise, but the Star Wars franchise yeah, but, as well. But I mean, the trailers were out before he got what given Star Wars, but so he, he had even that power back then. It's like, no, we're not showing this. And the company said, all right, fine, we're listening to you and we're not showing this. Yeah. Because I remember even even Leonard Nimoy didn't have that for, uh, I think it was the, um, the search for Spock. No, he didn't. He was begging. He's like, don't show the shot of the Enterprise blowing up. You know, he wants it to be a shock in the movie. But it's like, no, no, no. In the trailer, it's going to be a yeah, shocking. Yeah. People are going to want to see the movie. And it's like, I'm more on Leonard Nimoy's uh, yeah, me too. side there. But it's like, well, it's good that Abrams can do that. You know, so you, you get a sense of, oh, this movie's going to look cool. But you don't get, you know, a spoiler of the story. Uh, the difference between Leonard Nimoy in this capacity for Star Trek Three and um J.J. Abrams for his productions is that he's producer as well as director. Okay. okay. And and uh, every film he makes goes through his production company on top of that. So. Nice. So will it keep into the series, the, into the spirit, or will it F with the original? I have to say that based on his previous film, it, I think it will keep with the, uh, with the spirit. Because uh, that's what I love about Star Trek, uh, the, the new movie, is that it brought back the spirit. And again, like, like you just mentioned, I didn't know that, but how powerful he is. But he's not going to be pressured by other people that, you know, no, you need to add this to make it more zany or, or that more action. He's going to be like, no, I'm doing my thing. Mm -hmm. And if he keeps to the vision, which I'm probably he, he is, I, I don't think it's going to change. So, yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting viewing. I think so. Of course, having said that, small caveat, I know that a lot of Trek fans do not like the Star Trek reboot. Really? Yeah. Such as Frank, for example, from the D podcast. Okay. And I will say this. It seems to me that Abrams is a Trekkie, not a Trekker. If you're expecting science to be the driving theme of the story, yeah. it's not going to happen because that's a Trekker thing and yeah. Abrams is like full-on Trekkie. It's yeah. going to be Kirk's awesome humanity that drives the story. That's fine. That's, that's what the original series was all about, you know. Yeah. And, you know, it, even in, in Next Generation, there were more technology stuff because they could do it. 
but they, they, they still had the humanity. But you know, it's it became all technology, I guess, during Voyager or in, in yeah. another series. It was like, oh, do this, 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 and this, and you know, ship the tachyon pulse, and you're like, you know, I, I can't follow you guys because I know the science, but come on, seriously. <laughs> oh yeah, even the next generation finale, which we praised an awful lot. Yeah. I mean, there's one scene that made me laugh out loud, and like, because I subtitled it for the DVD release. Yeah. And when I got to that point, like, I laughed out loud in the office, and people went like, "What's going on?" I was like. Yeah, it's too long to explain. Yeah. But it's just like Jordy just going like, I don't know where Picard is, but I think we can get him back if we reverse the polarity of the... And I'm like, oh, no, you did not just sh- shoehorn that bullshit in there. It, like, it was you have, so unnecessary. You have to reverse the polarity. That's what you do all the time in the series. You reverse the polarity of stuff. That's their solution to everything. <laughs> I know. and It was like the, the story didn't need it at all, but they had to shoehorn that sentence in there. Like, we're going to reverse the polarity. Reverse yeah. polarity for what, Jordy? I, you didn't even establish that. You have to reverse the polarity. It is Star Trek. And they, <laughs> they better reverse the polarity in this movie as well. I will laugh out loud and it'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all this to say, I think we're both looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to go see it. Woo! All right. So if you want to share with us your feelings about the Star Trek series as a whole, or just on your anticipation for Star Trek Into Darkness, no colon, Write us at mail at idiomanic.com or post a comment at idiomanic.com. We are also on Facebook. We are also on Twitter. We're also on iTunes. Write us a review if you can. Even if it's a negative one, just yeah. be honest. Be honest. Be constructive. Constructive is important. Yes. Be honest. We appreciate the feedback and we don't have glass jaws. Like, so seriously, yeah. if you feel that we screwed up somewhere, we're going to learn from it. We're not going to be like, well, you're banned from our thing. It's like, yeah. no, you should, you know, we're grown ups. And if I made if we made a mistake discussing you know technical mistake discussing topic, I will argue with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if I made a grammar mistake, I will say yes, I did. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>It's like the major geek franchise, one of the first that created that devoted fan following, which would later lead to making remakes because you're insured an audience, whether or not they like it, they're going to see it type deal. Exactly. So totally in vain with our show is what I'm saying. Yep. All right. Star Trek. Uh, what was it called? The Star, first... Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> is it Star Trek? It's just Star Trek. I thought it was something. Lo- no. Oh, okay. It's just Star Trek. It's basically the voyages of the Starship Enterprise and its crew. and they basically... Led by Captain Pike. Captain Pike? Well, the first, the, for the pilot was... You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everyone, welcome to Don't F with the Original... With Nicholas, I am the gaming correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic and movie critic. Now, in celebration of the upcoming Star Trek Into Darkness, which is like, like you have to say it in one breath because there's no colon. Star Trek Into Darkness. <laughs> yeah, they were trekking into darkness. I realized I said darkness and colon in the same sentence. Anyway. Mm, nice. <laughs> We are going to talk about the original Star Trek, the motion picture. Yeah. Although, I find the word motion kind of relative in this context, yeah. but... That's why we're probably going to, you know, expand a little bit and talk about mostly Star Trek, the original series. And not just the original motion pictures, because we don't want to make everybody sleepy <laughs> during the podcast. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I was going to say, we already talked at length about star trek the motion picture during our worst of the 80s podcast you can listen to it it's part of the dreamers edge podcast at idiomatic.com plug uh so we're gonna expand the comp- had a goatee in evil universe yeah, it's uh what is it called mirror mirror that episode i, think? I forget i don't remember I, I never remember the title of the episodes uh, besides spock's brains which was spock's brain which is a classic but uh <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was just basically this big message of, you know, yeah, we can all work together and make this cool stuff in the future. In future, you know, things will be great. No more racism, no more bad stuff, 
just, you know, cool exploring of space. Yeah, that was totally Gene Roddenberry's idea, is that in the future, we will have outgrown most of the bitter things that is the source of human strife. Yeah. No more racism, no more sexism, equal opportunity everywhere. Yeah. Which, in this... We're really? doing it in order, aren't we? I guess. I didn't... I, I totally forgot that. Captain Pike. Wow. Captain Pike. He's Kirk's elder... Uh, this was before Kirk. He lands on the planet and decides to stay there at the end of the episode. That's why the second episode suddenly is Kirk. Yeah. Good good call. And, yeah, it's basically just a crew of people exploring the galaxy, promoting this, you know, unity thing, you know, that, you know, we can all be together. And, you know, even if we're different. Actually, that was the first two seasons. The third season was just the Alien of the Day episode. But the first two seasons... With were... time travel! Yes. And the evil universe... Uh, where people have goatees. Uh, that's where that comes from, by the way. Every time there's a you know evil universe and people have goatees, it's because 